Are you experiencing trials and spiritual warfare? Please join me for a Bible study about pressing on. Hello and welcome to Indestructible Life, a podcast where women discover the life Jesus is and treasure the life God's Word gives. I'm Emily Wickham, a wife and mom, plus an author and speaker, but most importantly, I'm a woman loved by God, just like you. So today we're going to look at a variety of scripture verses about pressing on through trials and spiritual warfare. But first, I want to share a couple of announcements. Today's episode is the last one in season three, and I would love to share what God has put on my heart for season four. I am planning to teach through a Bible study I taught several years ago about the traits of a godly woman. And we will take a look at different women like Ruth and the Proverbs 31 woman and Tabitha and Priscilla. Maybe you've heard of all of these women. Maybe you haven't heard of any of them, (laughs) but we're going to learn from their examples. And we're going to learn more about topics like uh, working with excellence or having a gentle and quiet spirit. What does that mean? I have found that topic usually intrigues many women. So we're going to look at some of those topics and Lord willing, This is going to begin October the 12th, so you have some time to make plans to join me for this Bible study, which I really hope you will do. And I think in the days we're living, it's more important than ever to learn what God's Word teaches about godly womanhood. So please plan to join me starting October 12th for season four of Indestructible Life. And please invite your friends. You can even get together as a group and watch the videos or tune in on your favorite podcast app. So I wanted to be sure to let you know what is coming up in the future with Indestructible Life. And that is always Lord willing, because we never know what a day holds, but this is what the Holy Spirit has put on my heart, and I'm excited to go through God's Word with you about this topic concerning the traits of a godly woman. All right, now I want to go ahead and get us into our message for today about pressing on, and I want to start us with a word of prayer, so please join me. Father in heaven, We are excited to open your word together and to learn what you have to teach us about pressing on. So I pray you would just use me as your vessel, God, and speak through your word as we contemplate this topic, as we sometimes get discouraged and we want to give up. Please Show us what it means to press on. And I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The way this study is going to work today is a little bit different than studies I've done in the past because I actually just have some selected verses that the Holy Spirit brought to mind starting yesterday. And they came to me in relation to a trial. I am experiencing. And so I sat down today and I tried to kind of put them in order that we can kind of work through together. And I'm just leaning on the Holy Spirit to teach us what he has for us. So let me begin by reading Ephesians 6 verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. What I want to point out mainly with this verse is we need to be strong in the Lord, but our strength comes from his might. We don't have strength in ourselves. And so as we are going through trials, as we encounter spiritual warfare, 
We need to be strong in the Lord's might. We need to rely on Him and not depend on ourselves. All right, the second verse I have for us, really, I'm not going to turn to that because I just want to highlight it. It's James 4, 7, and God's word tells us to resist the devil and he will flee from you. That is so important because as I said, often we want to give up and (laughs) this is kind of a silly little example, but I just want, I'm just going to tell you, this is, this feels like my 25th take of this video. It it takes a lot more work (laughs) to record video for this podcast rather than just recording audio. So here I am, probably I didn't count, but it feels like the 25th take. And honestly, I I told the Lord, I was like, I feel like giving up. (laughs) So, you know, Hopefully that just kind of makes you laugh, but it's the reality. When we are busy about doing the Lord's work, when our desire is to serve Him, there are things that come our way that can just frustrate us and discourage us and make us want to give up. But God's Word teaches us to press on. And the first way we do that is by having our strength in the Lord's might. Okay, uh, let me move on now to my next passage of scripture. I'm going to take us to the Old Testament, to the little tiny prophetic book of Habakkuk. And I actually have some note cards in my Bible to help me find all these passages. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. Yet I will exalt in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he has made my feet like hinds feet, and makes me walk on my high places. I love these verses, and I was reading through Habakkuk recently, and I knew the Lord just wanted me to include these verses in our study today, because again, we're told here, the Lord is our strength. He's the one who makes us strong. But prior to that, this writer says, I will exalt in the Lord. I wanted to include that verse here because it's beautiful for us to exalt in the Lord, to put our eyes on him, to recognize we are going to have victory because our victory is in the Lord and he is our strength and he makes our feet like hinds feet. And years ago, I learned more about this from a sermon. And the pastor said that, um, sorry, I need my glasses for this. <laughs> the pastor pointed out that the hind's feet were those of a stable animal. So a stable animal is not necessarily one built for treacherous places. But in this instance, it was a stable animal who was able to traverse treacherous places. And I love that because I certainly don't feel capable to go into treacherous places. I don't feel prepared. I don't feel ready. I don't feel strong enough. But that's what God does for us. He prepares us. He equips us. And he enables us to traverse treacherous places. So if you're in the midst of a battle, if you're in the middle of a horrific trial, if you're facing spiritual warfare, God is going to prepare you. God is going to equip you. You're not alone. He's with you. And I love this reminder from scripture about God being our strength. Let's look now at Romans 16, verses 17 through 18. Now I urge you, brethren, keep your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you learned, and turn away from them. For such men are slaves not of our Lord Christ, but of their own appetites, and by their smooth and flattering speech they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. So we see here, God is telling us to keep our eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching we have in God's word. So 
think about the people in your life. Do you know a person or a group of people who regularly cause division? God wants us to be wary of those people. In fact, he says here, turn away from them. So it's so important not to get totally distracted from what God has given us to do in sharing his word with others, in ministering to others in a variety of ways, whatever that looks like in your life. You know, it's not for everybody to to do the same thing. He's gifted us in different ways. But God doesn't want us to get sidetracked because of divisive people. And they're going to come into our lives. He wants us to turn away from them. I think he wants us to focus on what he's given us to do. And and let those people do what they're going to do. But don't let them hinder us and stop us from what God wants us to do. What has God called you to do in your life? As I said, each of us are gifted in different ways. So think about that and focus on that and keep that as your primary focus in life. And listen, I'm speaking to myself as much as to you. We're all in this together. We don't want to get distracted and sidetracked by these people who thrive on division and hindrance. We want to focus on God and the Lord Jesus Christ. It tells us here, these people are not slaves of our Lord Christ. They are slaves of their own appetites. And they have smooth and flattering speech. It's amazing how words can be used for the glory of God. And at the same time, words can be used to wound and destroy and to distract and to deceive. So let's take those things we hear and put them under the magnifying glass of God's word. Let's take every thought captive to Christ and only tune in to what comes from the Lord. All right, I'm going to go back now to the Old Testament, to the book of Isaiah, because along these lines of people who cause division and dissension and hindrance, And along these lines of thinking about trials and spiritual warfare, listen to this verse, Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that accuses you in judgment, you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication is from me, declares the Lord. Doesn't this verse just give you a boost of power. I love this verse. Every tongue that accuses you in judgment, you will condemn. And I looked that word condemn up in the Hebrew. What it refers to here is that um, it's a conviction. It's a declaration of guilt. So it's not condemnation in the sense of condemning a person. What it's getting at is we are able to rightly see that tongue that's accusing us. We're able to put it in the proper perspective so that we're not dancing around in this horrible cycle of um, feeling condemnation ourselves, but we're able to see what's going on. We're able to see this weapon formed against us in the light and we can classify it. We can put it in its proper category. And when we do that, We're able to stand firm against the enemy of our souls. And and God is telling us here, no weapon formed against us will prosper. So let's remember to be strong in the might of the Lord. And, And let's take courage because no weapon formed against us will prosper. This is what God says for the servant of the Lord. So my friend, today, are you facing a battle Are you in the midst of a trial? Be strong in the Lord. And remember, no weapon formed against you will prosper. All right, back to the New Testament. 
to the book of Philippians. And uh, this is a passage that has particularly given me strength over the last 24 hours. And uh, it's Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. There is so much value in forgetting what is behind. I know in my life I can get so distracted by the things that have happened in the past that I'm not present and I'm not looking ahead to what God has for me. And maybe you can relate to that. So sister, forget what is behind. Let's forget those things that that we regret or the things that that people have done to us, the things that, that get us anxious. Forget it and focus on what God has for us today and what he has coming for us in the future. Do you know we are waiting to hear that trumpet and that voice of the Lord just commanding us to come up and be with him for all eternity? I believe that's what this verse right here is referring to, that upward call of God in Christ. That's so exciting. So let's press on toward this goal we have of being called upward, this goal we have of that final redemption of our bodies. We need to forget what is behind and press on toward this call. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 12. This is encouraging. This is something that makes us strong. I'm going to read verses 7 through 9. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to read verses 7 through 10. And because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I entreated the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he has said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Wow. Do you know there is something I've prayed about in my life that God would change that he would remove, and he hasn't. And this verse came to me just yesterday where I was reminded that the Apostle Paul entreated the Lord three times for this removal of the thorn in his flesh, and and God did not remove it. Rather, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. And I believe he's telling that to you and I today. My grace is is sufficient for you. Whatever you're facing, whatever your trial looks like, whatever spiritual battle you are in the midst of, God's grace is sufficient. Take hold of that because as the title of this podcast reminds us, in Christ, we are indestructible. There is no power that can come against us that will destroy us. In Christ, we are indestructible. We are strong. We are powerful. And God's grace is sufficient. It wasn't just for the Apostle Paul. God's grace is for you and me. And I find myself these days praying and asking God for more grace. Just, Lord, I need your grace. I need your grace in this situation. 
I need your grace for this trial. I need your grace in this battle. I need your grace for every single moment of my life. And you know what? God never runs out. His grace is abundant. So let's cry out to him today for more grace. And we can trust him. He will supply the grace we need. All right, back in the Old Testament, I'm going to close us out with a couple of verses. The first is a favorite of mine in the book of Zephaniah. I believe it's also a favorite one of my dad's because he shared it with me years ago. Zephaniah 317, the Lord your God is in your midst, a victorious warrior. He will exalt over you with joy. He will be quiet in his love. He will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. Sister, let me remind you, the Lord your God is with you. He's with you. You're not alone. I'm not alone. And this truth alone is something that gives us strength. And Remember the verse I read in Habakkuk and it said, I will exalt in the Lord. And that was Habakkuk saying that he would exalt in the Lord. And that's something powerful for each of us to do. But I wanted to close us out with this reminder that the Lord is with you and me and he is exalting over you and me. Isn't that beautiful? It says he will be quiet in his love. I'm sorry, I'm getting I'm getting a little bit tearful because life is hard. The things we go through are tough. And we're no match. But our God is a victorious warrior and he is in the midst. And he's exalting over you and me. And he's quiet. In his love, sometimes we, we can't figure things out. That's often the case for me. But, but sometimes it's so powerful to just get quiet and just listen and let the Lord speak to us through his word and remind us of his everlasting love for you and for me. And, and to allow him to rejoice over us with shouts of joy. God loves you, my friend. And he will never, ever let you go. And then I have one final verse to read. And it's back in the book of Philippians. And it's chapter 4. Verse 1. These are my closing words. And I I just sensed the Holy Spirit saying, close things out with this verse because God's word teaches us that this Christian life is a battle. We go through trials that, that sanctify us, that strengthen us, that grow us. We also face spiritual warfare from the enemy who tries to get us to give up, who tries to make us quit. But remember this verse, Philippians 4.1. Therefore, my beloved brethren, whom I long to see, my joy and crown, so stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. Do you hear that? Stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. This is God's desire for us. Don't give up. Don't let go. Press on. God is right there with us, equipping us, empowering us, strengthening us. We just need to stand firm. Thanks so much for joining me for this episode of Indestructible Life. And remember, come back on October 12th for season four as we take a look at traits of a godly woman. I'm so grateful 
for each one of you. I hope this message has been a tremendous blessing, a timely message for you in your life. And until next time, this is Emily Wickham with Indestructible Life.